previously on Left Behind. Doctor? Eliezer Jehovah is with us. Jehovah God is actually with us. Forward! Attack! Behold, the Son of Man. Commander, we are losing troops by the thousands! It's all a deception! The Earth is swallowing troops! Yeah. How are we being deceived? General, you are relieved of your post! Thank you, sir! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Based on Glorious Appearing, the 12th book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 142 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thank you that your kingdom has come. Your will has been done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I am not alone, because the Father is with me. In me you have peace. In the world you had tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Gabriel, it is time. Prophecy shall now be fulfilled. It is the appointed time for all to acknowledge the Christ, the Son of the living God. My King, I accuse in your presence those who have worked against your love and grace. Those who have established themselves from old as your enemies. Those who have sought to defile your created ones. They are my created ones. Silence! Your time is not yet come. We begin with the fallen angelics, Ashtaroth, Cankerworm, and Baal. Step forward. As fulfillment of age-old scriptural prophecy, you kneel this day before Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, and those on earth, and those under the earth like you, and that every tongue, even yours, should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Christ is Lord. Repeat it. As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. But for you it is too late. 
You were once angelic beings in heaven with God. Rather than resist the evil one, you chose to serve the evil one. Like my father, with whom I am one, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but justice must be served, and death is your sentence. My lord and my god, have mercy on me. The false prophet shall kneel before the one true god. Oh, my lord and my god, I will kneel. Uh, I have been so blind, so wrong, so wicked. Do you know who I am? Yes. Do you know who I truly am? Yes, yes. I have always known, Lord. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You would blaspheme by quoting my servant Simon, whom I blessed for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto him, but my Father who is in heaven. No, no, Lord. Your Father revealed it to me too. I tell you the truth. Woe to you for not making that discovery while there was yet time. Rather, you rejected me. You rejected my father's plan for the world, and you pitted your will against mine and carried well the title of false prophet. Jesus is Lord! Jesus is Lord! Don't kill me! I beg you! Please! Death is too good for you. How many souls are separated from me forever because of you and the words that came from your mouth? I am sorry! Forgive me! I renounce all the works of Satan and Antichrist. I pledge my allegiance to you. You are sentenced to eternity in the lake of fire. Oh, God, no. Spare me, I beg of you. Your judgment awaits, and you Please. shall be silent until it is carried out. Antichrist, kneel before your Lord. <laughs> I recognize no authority here to which I will bow. Lucifer, leave this man. <laughs> Kneel! As you say. You became a willing tool of the devil himself. You were a rebel against the things of God and his kingdom. You caused more suffering than anyone in the history of the world. God bestowed upon you gifts of intelligence, beauty, wisdom, and personality, and you had the opportunity to make the most of these in the face of the most pivotal events in the annals of creation. Yet, yet you used every gift for personal gain. You led millions to worship you and your father, Satan. You were the cunning destroyer of my followers and accomplished more to damn the souls of men and women than anyone else in your time. Ultimately, your plans and your regime have failed. And now, who do you say that I am? Every God who died for the sins of the world, I rose again the third day, as the scriptures predicted. And what does that say about you and what you've made of your life? I confess, I confess that my life was a waste, worthless, a mistake. I rebelled against the God of the whom I now know loved me. You are responsible for the fate of billions. You and your false prophet shall be cast alive into the lake of fire. It is time. Stand to your feet. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, 
and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone! No! 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 There were a lot of forces at hand that day. I remember Mrs. Sebastian seeming torn between protecting Beth Ann and I and staring at what was happening. No, well, I have to tell you, Ken, I was concerned for you. It was victory, sure, but it was, it was heavy. I personally felt just stunned by the sheer weight of what I was watching. <laughs> and more was coming. Exactly. The thing is, I, I remember that moment as being about Jesus. Based on what you and others have told me, I would have guessed I would focus on just the darkness, but... And it's just conjecture on my part. I think that there was a protective filter that was cast over my experience that made it a thing of absolute wonder. Mm. And justice. And justice. And when all is said and done, love. Exactly. And I know Beth Ann, the same age as I, has told me that she experienced the same thing that day. You know, you were intentionally shielded from most of the atrocities of the Antichrist. Hmm. And that being the case, our fear was that you would misunderstand Jesus as being mean. Thankfully, God was very much in control even then. Indeed. So set the scene now. The three demons, the false prophet, the Antichrist, all gone. Done with for eternity. What's next? First of all, you have to understand that my head is about ready to explode. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, this is prophecy. I knew it would happen, but I I never expected to witness it. I mean, you just never say to yourself, I'm going to see this happen. But... I was standing there, and it was happening. And you, and you literally were standing. Mm. Had you rested at all since leaving Petra? Technically, no. We sat for a while at Megiddo, but beyond that, no sleep, amazingly no food. <laughs> you must have been exhausted. Actually, when we first arrived at the Mount of Olives and Jesus called me forward, for the first time at that moment, I felt some of the exhaustion that one would expect. So he calls me. I walk forward. He puts his hands gently on my face and says, I will give you rest. Mm. At that moment, I was as refreshed as I have ever been. He uh, gave me rest. So you're ready to go. Uh, Could have stood there all day. (laughs) (laughs) What happens next? Uh, Gabriel begins quoting scripture. And somewhere during Gabriel's presentation, Jesus says something to Michael, who walks off. Hmm. Uh, At this point, what's running through your mind? Well, I'm wondering if this is it. Is this the big one? Then, almost as if to answer my question, Gabriel starts in with Revelation 20. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years were finished. You are of God. Fear not, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Tell me about the lion. Easily three times larger than a normal lion. 
and Michael walks out holding this thing by the mane. <laughs> I remember the growl. Oh, I actually heard it echo around the old city. It was painfully loud. Take us through the sequence of events that happen next. All right. Michael has this very muscular grip on the neck of this enormous lion. And this lion is not happy about it. It is genuinely trying to free itself and seeking to devour, if you will, anyone it can. Suddenly, the lion transforms itself into a giant hissing serpent coiling itself around the angel's arms and legs. It's clear that it's trying to constrict around the arm and at the same time flashing its elongated fangs. Michael quickly rustles it to the ground, clamps its mouth shut. Of course, at this point, no one's really surprised when the creature transforms itself a third time. It grows, bulges, covers itself with slimy scales and sprouts four thick legs with horny toes, a, a lashing tail, a long neck, broad head, face, pointed ears, horns, and a fire-breathing mouthful of razor-sharp teeth. Now, out of thin air, Michael produces a heavy linked chain. This he quickly spins around the tail. The beast rolls onto its back, snorting flames, hissing, drooling, struggling against the restraints. The tail sweeps back and forth, trying to strike the angel. It's, it's its great head snapping side to side. Michael finally succeeds in lassoing the neck with the remains of the chain, and with a powerful yank, he pulls the head down toward the torso, rendering the dragon immobile. It lays there, snorting, writhing, obviously desperate to free itself. Finally, it appears to relax. But that's merely the setup for the final incarnation. The dragon gives way to what appears to be one more angel, brighter than the archangels, yet pale compared to the light of Christ. And Gabriel speaks. Lucifer, dragon, serpent, devil, Satan, you will now face the one you have opposed from time immemorial. I do not answer to you. No, but you do answer to me. Kneel at my feet. I will do no such thing. Kneel. I have fought against you from shortly after your creation. My creation? I was no more created than you. And who are you to have anything against me? You shall be silent. I... For all your lies about having evolved, you are a created being. Only God has the power to create. And you were our creation. You were in Eden the garden of God before it was a paradise for Adam and Eve. You were there as an exalted servant. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. But you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, we cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. You deceived Eve into sinning. You attempted to pollute the bloodline of Adam, putting it in Cain's heart to murder Abel. Because of you, within 1,600 years, only eight humans were found faithful and worthy of preserving from the flood. It was you who attempted to establish a universal idolatrous religion in Babylon. It was you who tried to destroy the Hebrew race, filling Pharaoh's mind with the idea to kill the male babies at the time of Moses' birth. You tried to attack me upon my earthly birth by filling Herod's mind with the idea of killing all the babies in Bethlehem. It was you who entered Judas Iscariot. You who filled the heart of Ananias with deceit. The earth was created as a utopia, and yet you brought into it sin which resulted in poverty and disease, more than 15,000 wars and the senseless killing of millions. You and your sin of pride spawned the rebellion of mankind against God, hatred, murder, and the damning of billions of souls. You were at work in the hearts of those who refused to obey God. It was you who prevented my servants from ministering. You who sowed discord in the churches. You who attacked the weak, the suffering, the lonely. It was you as the god of this evil world who blinded the minds of those who do not believe. During the last seven years, you have deceived millions with false teachers, false messiahs, a false prophet and an antichrist. You gave him his power, his throne, and his authority, and all the world marveled and followed him. But your time has come. 
it is you who have brought this on yourself. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet, you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Acknowledge Jesus as Lord. And, of course, that didn't happen. (laughs) What we're talking about here is the ultimate confrontation, good and evil. Exactly. Now, Satan had been struck silent, and much as it appeared he was trying to speak, no words came out. His gesturing made it clear, though, that he had no interest in acknowledging anyone as anything. Jesus looked briefly to his left, and about 30 yards away, a great gaping hole appeared in the ground. Black smoke belched from deep within and nearly blotted out the sky. I do recall the sky turning black. I think the reason I remember it is that the light around us didn't change. Uh, There was no change, of course, because the light of day is no longer produced from the sun, but rather from the Lord himself. Mm, Something we're all basically used to by now, Mm -hmm. but was amazing even to me at that point. Mm -hmm. So we have an enormous hole with black smoke pouring in. Michael scoops up this long, heavy chain and wraps it around his arm. At this point, Satan springs to his feet, begins to fight. Again, he morphs, first into the dragon, then the snake, and finally the lion. Oddly, in his form as the lion, Satan has no roar. (laughs) Jesus has silenced him, and that curse carries over regardless of his disguise. Michael finally works the chain around Satan, draws it tight, forcing the animal into a ball. And this is all Michael. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Gabriel, who normally proclaims, is standing by, looking every bit ready to jump in. And Jesus, meanwhile, has this incredible look of abject sadness on his face. Hmm. Okay, the lion is now under control. But certainly not done fighting. As he's lifted toward the smoking abyss, Satan alters himself yet again, back into the angel of light. He slips out of the chain, makes one last attempt to escape. Michael swings the chain, letting it slide through his hands, extending towards the devil. It catches him in the midsection and wraps itself around him. Michael rushes him, tackles him to the ground, completes the chain wrapping operation, jumps to his feet, and begins charging the hole, carrying the bound devil with him. And just before reaching this smoldering chasm, Michael leaves his feet, carrying Satan under his arm and flies 20 feet into the air, turns and dives headfirst down into the abyss. <laughs> Just hearing you describe it, mm. you get this feeling of victory. Yeah, well, the crowd goes nuts at this point. I mean, if you think about the implications in history, and after what seemed like a rather long time, Michael reemerges mm. with a key in his hand. And Satan and the chain are nowhere to be seen. No celebration. Oh, a real outpouring Praise to Jesus for his being powerful enough to have accomplished what we just witnessed. Oh, yes, loud praise. (laughs) And then Jesus stands. And before slowly riding off on his white horse toward the Temple Mount, he says, And now, to my Father God, the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to he alone is wise, be honor and glory forever. Beloved, sin reigned in death, but even so grace reigns through righteousness to eternal life. Even the demons recognize me as the Holy One of God. I stand before you this day as the King of Israel. He who comes in the name of the Lord. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is based in part on the book Glorious Appearing by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. Sound design by Glenn West. Music by Steve Wick. Directed and produced by Todd Bastide. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.